when you're out portable, would you rather be carrying this or this? In this video, I'll present a compact two element, two meter Yagi. Another benefit of this small antenna is it frees up space to carry something else, like this mast. A few metres extra height on a two element Yagi is likely to give as good results as a lower three element Yagi. The main ingredients of the beam are two sets of telescopic Rabbiteers TV antennas. One for the driven element and one for the reflector. The one for the reflector has both halves connected together. You may just be able to see the wire connecting them under the heat shrink. A good thing about these mounts for the telescopic antennas is there's a gap where you can stick a dowel into. Because the gap is a bit larger than the outside diameter of the dowel, which I think is about 9.5 millimeters, I've put some irrigation tubing in to make the fit snug and added some glue. Because these antennas are telescopic, this beam has a wide frequency range. For instance, you could use it for FM broadcast or aircraft band reception, as well as the amateur two meter band. And if you're in North America, you could easily use it on 220 megahertz. The driven element is another pair of rabbit's ears. In this case though, the elements are split, not connected together. You can either directly connect them to coaxial feed line, or as I've done, via a terminal block, a BNC socket, and then used an external cable to connect. A piece of chopping board mounts the antenna socket to the boom. Irrigation fittings are a snug fit to the dowel. That means that you could turn it around 90 degrees to make the antenna either vertically polarized or horizontal, as we'll be using here. I've used cable ties to connect another irrigation fitting to it. That's for the mast to pass through. On the driven element end is some red heat shrink tubing. That serves no useful purpose except to tell you what direction the antenna is pointed to when you're looking at it from the ground. The elements are separated by 40 centimetres, and that's the length to which you should cut the dowel. The element spacing isn't particularly critical, although if you're also going to be using this antenna for 220 megahertz, then you might try a slightly narrower spacing so that you've got a good compromise for both two metres and 1.25 metres. At least I've come properly equipped. It's useful to have a tape measure when you're setting up for the first time. Or, in case you forget your tape measure, memorise some important dimensions on your body so you can measure antennas out in the field. On two meters, the driven element is 48 centimeters from the dowling boom and the reflector 52 centimeters. How directive is the beam? VK3RGI, Gippsland. The beam is definitely successful 
with VK7HH and VK3TXR being amongst the furthest copied stations on WISPA. And on the transmit side, VK2KRR and VK3OT were the furthest to decode my signal. As you heard, this has been a successful antenna, with signals from VK1, 2, 3, 5 and 7 detected or heard. It only takes a couple of hours to build and would be an ideal holiday project for portable operating.